Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending August 1st. This will be a late report because all hell broke loose this morning and I got a call and had to run out and fix some equipment, uh, which will not be unusual in the future. I may be late because of that in the future, so just be aware. My first article is from Science Alert. Scientists have finally discovered massless particles and they could revolutionize electronics. Now this is a particle called a while fermion that they've known in theory, they've, they've thought in theory that it does exist and they've finally done two different experiments and found out that it does exist and the nice thing about the while fermion is just like an electron it carries a charge but whereas an electron is a particle that has mass and also is subject to the same things that particles that have mass are subject to like uh, running into each other, crowding, electronics, uh, electron scattering, and things like that. This while fermion could be used in electronics if they're able to develop it far enough to where it would not have those effects and it would travel much faster in electronic circuits as far as carrying a charge and we would be able to uh, possibly keep on going with keeping computers and electronics faster and faster and faster now this is just a discovery to make sure that these things absolutely do exist which is far from practical use in electronics but this is theoretically what could actually happen and so what they did was they beamed uh, some uh, microwaves through some crystals and actually by using some for, sort of calculations for what the expected results were they were able to pretty well determine that they actually were um, finding these wire fermions so in case you uh, don't know all particles basically are either made up of fermions or bosons. Fermions are the particle part and bosons are the force carrying part. I know that's probably oversimplification and uh, uh, feel free to correct me in the comments or anything but I think that's basically a good general view of what's happening here but um, yeah just the fact that we have something that can speed up electronics uh, to some degree or possibly have that happen in the future I think is a pretty good thing and next up this is from the consumerist here's why Amazon's stupid shipping gang wrapped some bubble wrap in brown paper now I don't know if you guys have found a lot of times where you're kinda of curious about the way they pack things when you get them from Amazon mostly what I have found too is they have these huge boxes to where they you'd get something maybe the size of a of a pencil or maybe a USB thumb drive and it would be in a box like yay big and it would just be taped to the bottom and in my case the boxes were just filled basically with nothing so um, part of it doesn't make any sense but anyway, this is a uh, an article about this, and they have one of the readers named Brittany. She's a veteran of the shipping industry, and she's answering for why Amazon would do something like take bubble wrap and then wrap it in brown paper to fill up the rest of the box. She says, and I'll just read it here, a well-packed box should be able to have at least 150 pounds stacked on top of it without a single crushed corner. In training, we actually had to group into teams and pack a single fragile item like a glass mug well enough that our instructor could stand on top of the box without any damage. Any idea how this was accomplished? Run pack or craft paper, as you call it in the art. Yeah, ran pack, I think. This paper can be stuffed and compressed enough, especially in the corners, so that any uh, item will be protected from trauma. So, yeah, that explains that part of it as to why they would even something like bubble wrap or things like that just overpack it to fill the box. Still doesn't give me an explanation for why they use such a large box and then have nothing on it and just maybe the item at the bottom of the box taped to the bottom of the box and filled with air that uh, but anyway yeah that kinda explains there if you wanna get a, an idea into why sometimes they may seem to you to be over packing a box or doing something silly like taking bubble wrap and putting brown paper wrapping around it I guess it's to uh, give the box compressive strength still don't know an idea about the other one oh I, I would also like to thank I believe his, his name is Craig that commented on uh, last week if not I'll, I'll put the name in the uh, uh, somewhere below here and also in the description I asked last week about how possibly mechanical brakes could be overridden to where when cars were you know that uh, article I did last week about hacking in cars well I wondered how the brakes could be overridden to where they'd be non-functional and uh, this commenter uh, told me that it's possible you could take the anti-lock brakes and set them into a kind of a fluttering mode by uh, basically just sending so many signals so quickly quickly they just pulse too fast and basically render your brakes ineffective to me that sounds like the most logical explanation I can't think of a better one so thank you very much for commenting on that and giving me an answer that sounds very logical and very practical um, really appreciate it I got some really good uh, people that view the TDD report and come up with things like that when I can't figure them out. 
And this next article is from MIT Technology Review, a biodegradable computer chip that performs surprisingly well. I think that this was sent by 1954 Shadow, my friend Bob H. Researchers show that devices based on material derived from woodworks, as well as the communications chip in your smartphone, Biodegradable, wood-based computer chips can perform just as well as chips commonly used for wireless communication, according to new, search, new research. The inventors argued that the new chips could help address the global problem of rapidly accumulating electronic waste. So in other words, you're going to have a totally biodegradable material. And here I'll show you how it says, in two recent demonstrations, Ma and his colleagues, that's the name of the guy that's I guess one of his nicknames and his colleagues show they can use nanocellulose as the support layer for radio frequency circuits that perform comparably to those commonly used in smartphones and tablets. They also showed that these chips can be broken down by common fungus. Uh, what he did basically was take a, he, he made the circuit in the normal way and then what he did was he used a rubber stamp to lift it from the wafer and transfer them to a new surface made of nanocellulose. And his whole name, if I could pronounce this right, is Zhengyang Jack Ma, a professor of electrical and computer engineering. This reduced the amount of semiconducting material used by a factor of up to 5,000 without sacrificing performance. So I think what they're doing is they're just lifting an ultra-thin layer of the circuit itself off of the uh, silicon backing material and just putting it onto a biodegradable material so you just have a very very thin layer and it still seems to perform well enough to do the job so just another thing uh, of cutting down on the amount of materials that you don't really need because they're basically if it's just basically a support structure I suppose you could use a biodegradable support structure just as well as a non biodegradable one so anyway, that's it for this week. I would like to thank everybody for your contributions and thank you for your answers in the comments when I ask questions. So take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.